Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Friday, August 14th, 2020. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's NHL, NBA, MLB, and WNBA games and look ahead to today and the weekend's games. Go over to current leaderboard at the Windham Championship. I'll preview and pick at the three NASCAR races at the Daytona Road Course. I'll go over which other NFL players got contract extensions in the last 24 hours, and my best bet of the day. All right, we'll start with the NHL. We'll go over the results from yesterday and look ahead to today and the weekend, and I'm going to predict how each series will be. Blue Jackets over to Lightning 3-1 to one to even up that series at one apiece. Number three started the game with a goal. Um, Alexander Wenberg, number two, started the game with two assists. Pierre-Luc Dubon, number one, started the game with 36 saves on 37 shots. Junis Corpusello. Golden Knights over to Blackhawks 4-3 to in overtime. On a goal by Riley Smith. The number three star of the game with three assists. Patrick Kane, number two star of the game with two assists. Jonathan Marshall, number one star of the game with a goal and assist. Riley Smith. As the Knights go up 2-0 in the series. Hart Kane's over to Bruins, 3-2 to even up that series at one apiece. Number three star of the game with a goal and assist. Brad Marchand, number two star of the game with a goal. Dougie Hamilton, number one star of the game with a goal and assist. Andrei Sveshnikov. Stars over the Flames, 5-4 to four to even up that series at one apiece. The number three star of the game with a goal, Jamie Oleksiak. The number two star of the game with a goal and assist, Corey Perry. And the number one star of the game with two goals, Miro Hiskinen. Looking ahead to today and the weekend, 2 o'clock NHL Network, you got the Coyotes against the Avalanche. The Avalanche are up 1-0 in the series. Um, I'm going to go bold and say that the uh, Coyotes take a game here to make this a little interesting. So go. I'm going to go with the Coyotes. Colorado is a minus 200, which is crazy. And that's on the money line. And Arizona is plus 175. So that's very juicy for an underdog. So give me the underdog Coyotes here against the Colorado Avalanche. 3 o'clock NBC has sent the Canadians and the Flyers. Um, unfortunately, uh, Cole Julian has um, been rushed to the hospital dealing with chest pains. Um, so he might miss the entire series. I think the Canadians are going to play hard for him, and I think they're going to win this game. Um, Gary Price played well in defeat the other day. And I think that um, the Canadians are going to rally around uh, their coach. So give me the Canadians to even up the series at one apiece. And the Canadians um, are plus 140. Oh, speaking of uh, the devil, um, Hab's coach will travel home from Toronto to rest following a um, stenting of a coronary artery. So at least he is... Um, um, going to uh, to rest a little bit and he'll be okay. So prayers to uh, Claude Julian. It's just funny that that um, news popped up as I'm talking about Claude Julian. But in all seriousness, hopefully he gets well soon. Um, six thirty to Canucks and the Blues. Vancouver's up one zero in the series. Um, I would say St. Louis evens this up tonight. They are minus one forty five. Um, that offense needs to get going. Vlad Tarasenko, Jaden Schwartz, and Ryan, Ryan O'Reilly. So I'm going to say the Blues even up this one at one apiece. So that's a favorite I like tonight. 8 o'clock NBCS on the Islanders and the Capitals. Um, this is another game where I like the favorite to tie it up. Um, I like Washington tonight to at least make it a 1-1 series. Um. Alex Ovechkin, I know Nick Bass from that loss hurts. It's just a gut feeling I have about Ovechkin going to go off tonight. TJ Oshie, um, 
That was a brutal collapse they had, and I think that they want to make a little statement here. So give me the Capitals against the Islanders. 10-30, the Stars and the Flames. Um, so for the second night in a row that those two teams will play. Um, even money. Each side, I'm going to go Calgary. Um, I picked them to win the series in 7. I think they get this game here, so... Um, give me the Flames over the Dallas Stars. And then Saturday, 12 o'clock, NBC, Bruins, Hurricanes. It's a 1-1 series. I think Bruins go up 2-1. Arizona, Colorado, back-to-back. That's a 3 o'clock game. I think Colorado in game three. Um, Lightning Blue Jackets Saturday at 7.30. Um, I'm going to say that Tampa Bay bounces back and gets the win. And Saturday, 8 o'clock on NBC, the Golden Knights and the Blackhawks. I'm going to say the Blackhawks get a game in the series to make it a little interesting. Um, big day on um, Sunday. 12 o'clock, you have the Caps and the Islanders. I think the Islanders win that one. Um, 2 o'clock, NBCSN, Stars, Flames. Um, I'm going to go Dallas. Um, 6.30, Golden Knights, Blackhawks on Sunday. Um, I'm going to say the Knights. Flyers, Canadian Sunday at 8 o'clock. I'll go Flyers. And then 10.30, um, the Blues and the Canucks. We'll go with the Blues. So, how I think each series will be as of Monday morning when I do this podcast. I think that Philadelphia Montreal will be 2 1 Philly. I think that Tampa Columbus will be 2 1 Tampa. I think that Washington Islanders will be 2 1 Islanders. I think that Boston. Carolina will be um, 2-1 in favor of Boston. And over on the Western Conference side of things, I think Golden Knights will be up 3-1 on the Blackhawks. I'm going to say that um, Colorado is up 2-1 on the Coyotes. I'm going to say that St. Louis is up 2 1 on Vancouver and Calgary will be up. Or I'm sorry. Um, I think Dallas and Calgary will be tied at two games apiece come Sunday. So it should be a super fun weekend full of games. Now we'll move on to the NBA. We'll go over last night's games and go over today's and the. In the Tomorrow's lone game. Unbelievable that um, we're headed towards the playoffs already in the NBA. So it should, it should be a lot of fun. Wizards over to Celtics 96-90. The Wizards finally win a game in the bubble. Had to take the Celtics resting everybody. They're 25-47. and 47. Boston 48-24. and 24. Thomas Bryant had 26. And Javante Green had 23 for Boston. Kings over the Lakers, 136 to 122. The Kings are 31 and 41. The Lakers, 52 and 19. Buddy Hill had 28 for the Kings. And Deion Waiters had 19 with five assists for the Lakers. Grizzlies over the Bucks, 119 to 106 to uh, earn a spot in the play in game. Memphis is 34 and 39. Milwaukee is 40 or 56 and 73. Brooke Lopez had 19 points and nine boards. Dylan Brooks, 31 points to lead Memphis. Suns over to Mavs, 128-102. The Suns finish the bubble a perfect 8-0. Phoenix is 34-39. Dallas is 43-32. Devin Booker, 27 points. Um, Boban Marjanovic had 18 with 20 rebounds. Jazz over the Spurs, 118-112. The Jazz 44 and 28, San Antonio 32 and 39. Keldon Johnson had 24 points. Rajon Tucker had 
18. Blazers over to Magic, 134 to 133 in what was the best game of the night. Portland 35 and 39, Brooklyn 35 and 37. Damian Lillard, 42 points to lead the Blazers in 12 assists. Karis LeBert, 37 points, 9 assists. He was tremendous. That was the best I've ever seen him play going toe-to-toe with Lillard. And ultimately, Lillard and the Blazers come out on top to a get that play-in spot, and had they lost, it would have been the Phoenix Suns against the Grizzlies in the playoff or play-in game. So, um, interesting subplots there. Pelicans, or Magic over to Pelicans, 133-127. to 127. Orlando 33-40, and 40, New Orleans 30-42. and 42. Frank Jackson had 31 for New Orleans. Nikola Vucevic, 23 at 6 boards for Orlando. Four games on Friday, um, 1.30, the Nuggets and the Raptors. Um, should be a fun game. The Raptors are minus 2.5. I would actually make this game Raptors by 3.5, but the number's too close, so I'm going to avoid that. Instead, I'm going to go to the total. Oh, the totals aren't out yet. That sucks. Um. Hmm. I'll probably go Toronto minus the two and a half. Um. Maybe DraftKings has the totals. Let's see. If they have them. Um. No, they don't have the totals out either. So we have to do against the spread. Um. So give me Toronto minus two and a half. Do I feel good about it? No, because it's close. Miami and Indiana. Indiana's a one point favorite. Um. Normally I'd make Miami by four, but Jimmy Butler and Bam Abadeo are both sitting as far as I'm concerned. Let me double check that. Um, yeah, no Butler, no Bam, no Casey Alcapala, no Dragic. So, a lot of guys out for the Miami Heat. Um, so, those two, the big two of Bam and Butler combined six. That makes Indiana a two-point favorite. But I'm going to quickly check and see if there's any Indiana injuries that are important. No, so... um. Give me Indiana minus the one against Miami. So, again, I'd make Indiana favored by two without those two players. And that's at 4 o'clock on ESPN. 6.30 on ESPN, you have the Thunder and the Clippers. That line was is still not up on FanDuel. ESPN has it clips by six. DraftKings has it clips by six. Um, I would make this six and a half without Chris Paul. We had learned that he will be sitting this one out. Um, no Pat Beverly, no Schroeder. So, um, give me the Clippers minus six half point edge towards, um, towards the Clippers. So, great. And now the Toronto line, Toronto line moved to three. My edge was three and a half. I could still bet it, but, um, all my lines are coming out very close today. And then, um... And now the Thunder Clipper line shows up on here on FanDuel. Um, 
And then the Rockets host are against the Sixers. Um, in terms of injuries, no Russell Westbrook. That's a huge deal. Um, we don't know anything about the 76ers. Looks like Embiid's going to play. Um, so, with Westbrook... It should be Rockets by five and a half. Without Westbrook, it should be Rockets three and a half. Without Embiid and Westbrook, it should be Rockets seven and a half. And with Westbrook and without Embiid, it should be nine and a half. So it's either it should be seven and a half or three and a half. Let's say Embiid plays three and a half in favor of the Rockets. So give me Philadelphia plus four and a half against the Houston Rockets. And then Saturday, the big play-in game between the Blazers and the Grizzlies for the eighth seed. So if Portland wins, they get it. But if Memphis wins, they play one more time, win or take all. So that's how that is going to work. I would make Portland a three-point favorite over the Grizzlies. Portland's favored by seven. I have a huge edge on Memphis. I do think Portland will win, but I think the Memphis Grizzlies will cover. So give me Memphis plus seven against Portland, although I expect the Portland Trailblazers to win the game because I have them projected to win the game. Now we'll move on to Major League Baseball, go over the games from yesterday and go over the games that will be going on over the weekend and today obviously so um not a busy day yesterday um Mets over the Nats 8 to 2 uh the Mets 9-11 Washington 6 and 9 David Peterson the win Austin Volk the loss homers Dominic Smith um Thomas Nito Thomas Nito again and Juan Soto um, David Peterson, five innings a hit, no one runs, two walks, three strikeouts, zero two point nine one. 2.91. Um, Jeff McNeil had to leave the game because he made a running catch to Rob. Um, I want to say it was um, Juan Soto of an RBI double, perhaps, and catches the ball at the warning track and gets injured and had to get um, carted off. So, um Hopefully Jeff McNeil gets well soon. That would be a big loss for the Mets if he misses time. Austin Wolf, four innings, six hits, three and runs, two walks, two strikeouts, three, 3.21. Orioles over to Phillies, 11-4 to, to pull off a surprising sweep. They're 10-7. Philadelphia is 5-9. and nine, So um, Baltimore um, showing people that they could very well um, end up making the postseason. As amazing as that sounds, you you probably thought with the expanded postseason that somebody bad was going to make it or somebody that had no shot. And, hey, it might be the Orioles. Getting the win, um, Tom Eshelman, the loss, Jake Arrieta. Home runs, JT Romuto twice, um, Pedro Severino, and Rio Ruiz. Um... Eshelman, five innings, four hits, two and runs, no walks, two strikeouts, zero, 3.65. Jake Garrietta, four and two thirds, seven hits, four and runs, a walk, and four strikeouts, zero, 4.02. Rays over the Red Sox, 17 to eight. The Rays are 12 and eight. Boston, six and 13. Jalen Beeks, the win. Kyle Hart, the loss. Anthony Banda, the save. Home runs in this game. Hunter Renfro, Brendan Lau. Hunter Renfro again. Uh, Mike Sanino. And the Red Sox didn't have any. Tyler Glass now. Four innings, eight hits, five runs, two walks, eight strikeouts, zero, 7.04. He's been disappointing. Um, Kyle Hart, two innings, seven hits, five runs, three walks, four strikeouts, zero, 22.5. Pirates over the Reds, nine to six. Bad loss for Cincinnati. They dropped eight and 11. Pittsburgh's four and 13. Trevor Williams, the win. Anthony G. Scalfani, the loss. Home runs. Adam Frazier, Colin Moran, um, Gregory Polanco, Nick Senzel, Freddie Galvis, Tucker Barnhart. 
Uh, Trevor Williams, five innings, seven hits, three runs, a walk for a strikeout, three, 3.98. Anthony DiScofani, two innings, nine hits, nine runs, two walks, and a strikeout, near a 6.23. Cubs over to Brewers, four to two. The Cubs are 13 and three. Milwaukee, seven and 10. You Darvish to win, Brett Anderson the loss, and Rowan Wick the save. Home runs, Kyle Schwarber and Justin Smoke. Daughter, seven innings a hit and a run, two walks, 11 strikeouts, zero, 1.88. The lone hit I believe he gave up was the homer to smoke. Brett Anderson, four and a third, five hits, two runs, two walks, five strikeouts, zero, 4.91. Dodgers over to Padres, 11 to two, so another best bet goes wrong. Dodgers, 13 and seven, Pods, 11 and nine. Julio Urias to win, Chris Paddock the loss. Home runs, Tommy Pham, Eric Hosmer, Corey Seager, A.J. Pollock, Mookie Betts, who homered three times, Austin Barnes. Yuri is six in the third, five hits, two runs, no walks, three strikeouts, three, 2.53. Chris Paddock, three and six hits, six or runs, a walk, and a strikeout, three, 4.91. That's very dismal against the Dodgers. Um, Today's slate, um, a resumed game between the Orioles and the Nationals that was suspended on... Um, Hmm. I guess it was from August 9th. So that was from Sunday. That's going to be uh, continued here. Oh, that was Steven Strasburg's debut. Gave up five runs in the fifth inning. Um, seven, or I'm sorry, 630 Fox Sports 1 Rays Blue Jays. Trevor Richards and Tanner Rourke. Um, should be a good pitching matchup there. Um, actually, take that back. That's a bad pitching matchup. Richards 0 0, 5.79. Whip 1.82. Rourke 1 1, 5.63. Whip 1.38. Um, in terms of a winner, I'm going to go with the Rays just to be safe. Their offense has been really good. Maybe it's because they ran into the Red Sox. But um, they're running into another bad pitching team in the Blue Jays. So give me Tampa Bay on the road. 7 o'clock, the Red Sox at the Yankees. Um, Garrett Cole a, and um, a TBD. Cole 3-0 at the 3.22 ERA, whip of .94. Mets Phillies. Jacob DeGrom and Spencer Howard. DeGrom 2-0 at the 2.45 ERA, whip of .95. Howard 0-1 at the 7.71 ERA, whip of 1.71. Pirates, Reds, Chad Cole and Sonny Gray. Cole, no decisions, 2 ERA, whip of 1. Sonny Gray, 3-1 and one with a 2.25 ERA, whip of 0.92. Indians in the Tigers. Aaron Savali and Ivan Nova. Savali, 1-2 and two with a 2.84 ERA, whip of 1. Nova, 1-0 and with a 5.74 ERA, whip of 1.53. Braves in the Marlins. Kyle Wright and Pablo Lopez. Kyle Wright, 0 2, the 6.75 ERA, whip of 2.08. Pablo Lopez, 1 1, the 1.80 ERA, whip of 1.1. Nationals, Orioles. Steven Strasburg and Tommy Malone. Strasburg, no decisions with the 10.38 ERA, whip of 1.85. Malone, 1 1, the 3.21 ERA, whip of 1.14. Royals Twins, Jacob Junis and Jake Odorizzi. Both players have no decisions. Junis ERA of 4, Odorizzi an ERA of 6. Junis whip of 1.67, Odorizzi whip of 2. A15, the Brewers and the Cubs, Brandon Woodruff and Tyler Chatwood. Woodruff 1 1 with a 2.53 ERA, whip of 0.98. Chatwood 2 1 with a 5.4 ERA, whip of 1.4. 840, the Rangers against the Rockies. Lance Lynn and Ryan Castellini. Lynn 2-0 to 1.16 ERA, whip of 0.94. Castellini, no decisions, 0 ERA, whip of 0.25. 9 o'clock, the Mariners and the Astros. You say Kikuchi against Fomber Valdez. Kikuchi, own with the 5.28 ERA, whip of 1.3. Valdez, own to the 2.04 ERA, whip of 1.08. 940, the Padres against the Diamondbacks. Danielson, Lamette against Merrill Kelly. Lamette 2 0 the 1.61 ERA, whip of 0.85. Kelly 2 1 the 2.29 ERA, whip of 0.97. 
940 Fox Sports 1, the Dodgers and the Angels, Clayton Kershaw and Patrick Sandoval. Kershaw, 1-1 one one to 3.6 ERA, whip of 1.1. Sandoval, 0-1 one to 2.7 ERA, whip of 1. 9.45, the A's and the Giants, Frankie Montas and Johnny Cueto. Montas, 2-1 one with the 1.57 ERA, whip of 1. Cueto, 1-0 one with the 5.4 ERA, whip of 1.36. Saturday, 2 o'clock, the return of the St. Louis Cardinals against the Chicago White Sox. You got Dakota Hudson going up against Lucas Giolito. I'm just going to go through the pitching matchups now, not necessarily the uh, the stats. Um, 6 o'clock, the Mets and the Phillies, Stephen Matz and Aaron Nola. Um, 6 o'clock, Fox Sports 1, the Pirates against the Reds. Stephen Brell and Trevor Bauer. Indians, Tigers, Shane Bieber and Spencer Turnbull. Braves, Marlins, Max Freed, and we don't know who's going for Miami. 6.30, Rays, Blue Jays from Buffalo, Ryan Yarbrough and Chase Anderson. 7 o'clock, Nats, Orioles, Patrick Corbin and Asher Wojciechowski. Mariners Astros, Nick Bergavicius against Christian Javier, Royals Twins, Danny Duffy and Jose Barrios, doubleheader game two, Cardinals White Sox, we don't know who's pitching in that game, 7-15 on Fox, you have the A's against the Giants, Jesus Lazardo against Kevin Gossman, this is easy, Oakland's rolling right now. Tied with the Yankees for the best record in the American League. Um, I think that they are going to win this game. They are the better team. Or I'm sorry, they're a half game ahead of the Yankees. Um, I was wrong about that. Um, but they're tied with a little loss column with the Yankees. Give me the A's. They're better. Lazardo's their ace now. So give me a Lazardo to lead the way for Oakland. The other game on Fox, Saturday at 7-15, Red Sox-Yankees. Nathan Evaldi and James Paxton. Um, I bet the over in this game 100 times out of 100. This was, if I'm not mistaken, Sunday Night Baseball a couple weeks ago. Or no, it wasn't Evaldi. It was... Um, <sighs> um, one of those openers, like Ryan Weber or something like that. I'm going to go Yankees here. Paxton pitched very well in his last outing against the Rays. Though he's blemished by giving up back-to-back homers. So, give me the Yankees at home against Boston. 8 o'clock, Padres, Diamondbacks. Luis Perdomo, and we don't know who's going for Arizona. Rangers, Rockies. Kyle Gibson and Herman Marquez. 8-15, Brewers, Cubs. Adrian Hauser and Alec Mills. And 940, the Dodgers and the Angels, Walker Bueller and Andrew Heaney. Sunday, 1 o'clock, ESPN Indians, Tigers, Adam Pluko and Michael Fulmer. Um, the Tigers have been a pleasant surprise this year, but they've won, or they lost their last couple games, reverting to back what they really are. I think they're going to be terrible in these last two-thirds of the season. And I think the Indians will start to go on a little roll here. And... They will only be better once those pitchers come back from suspension. So give me Adam Pluko and the Indians to get it done on Sunday afternoon. Nats Orioles. Max Scherzer, Alex Cobb. Mets Phils. Rick Porcello, Zach Wheeler. Pirates Reds. Derek Holland, Luis Castillo. Braves Marlins. Tukey Toussaint, and we don't know who's going for Miami. 2 o'clock, the Cardinals and the White Sox. Kwang Hyun Kim. And Dallas Keuchel, Mariners Astros, Justice Sheffield, Lance McCullers Jr., Royals Twins, Brady Singer and Randy Dobnak, 220 Brewers Cubs, Josh Lindbaum and John Lester, Rays Blue Jays at 3 o'clock, we don't know who's going for Tampa, and Matt Shoemaker's going for um, Toronto. Rangers Rocks, Kobe Allard and John Gray. 4 o'clock A's Giants, Sean Manaya and Logan Webb. Padres Diamondbacks, Garrett Richards and Robbie Ray. 4 o'clock TBS, Dodgers Angels, Dustin May and Julio Tehran. Um, Tough call here. Um, I won't be shocked if the Angels wind up winning this game, but I'm going to go Dodgers. 
They're just better and they're the safer bet. That's the Mays pitched well. So give me the Dodgers to perhaps get a sweep here against the Angels. And then Sunday night baseball, you got the Red Sox and the Yankees for the second time in three weeks. We don't know who's going for Boston. Jay Happ's going for the Yankees. The overs a lock in this game. That's all I got to say. Um, I'm going to pick the upset here. Jay Happ's been terrible this season. Um, the Yankees made a huge mistake in re-signing him instead of signing like Charlie Morton. I think Charlie Morton would have been really good for this rotation as their number four starter. But then everyone's going to scream at me, what about Patrick Corbin? Listen, Patrick Corbin didn't come here because he didn't want to come here and he would have, I think, been a bust here. And the same goes for Philadelphia. He didn't want to go to Philadelphia because he would have been paid like to be the man and he, I think he would have been a bust there. He went to Washington because he, didn't, he knew that he didn't have to be the man there. He was the man in Arizona. Um, he had to be the guy in New York. And if they sign him, they probably don't sign Garrett Cole. But there's everybody saying that, they, yeah, they could have done that because they're the Yankees. That's not really how it works anymore. Unless they, they traded some contracts and whatnot. But yeah, if they sign Charlie Morton instead of Jay Happ, then the rotation is fantastic. But Morton's hurt right now. So um, give me the Red Sox to upset the Yankees on Sunday Night Baseball as they avoid the sweep. The WNBA, we're going to go over the games from yesterday and look ahead to the games that will be played tonight and over the weekend. Fever over to Liberty, 86-79. The Fever, 4-5. The Liberty, 1-8. Tiffany Mitchell had 19 for Indiana. Kia Nurse had 21 with three assists for the Liberty. Sparks over to Mystics, 81-64. Sparks, 6-3. Washington, 3-6. Rakina Williams had 13 to lead the Sparks. Ariel Atkins had 20 to lead the Mystics. Aces over to Lynx, 87-77. Vegas, 7-2. Minnesota, 6-3. Aja Wilson had 23 points and eight rebounds. Nafisa Collier, 21 points, 14 boards. Three games tonight, 7 o'clock, the sun in the sky. 8 o'clock, the storm in the wings. 10 o'clock, the dream in the mercury. Saturday, 12 o'clock, ESPN, the Mystics and the Aces. The Aces are on a roll right now. They're the better team. And I think they'll get it done here. So give me the Aces to um, get another um, good win on national TV. 2 o'clock on ESPN, the Sparks and the Fever. Um, the Fever looked really good in their win against the Liberty. Um, I think that they come up short against the uh, the much more talented uh, Los Angeles Sparks. 6 o'clock, CBS Sports Network, the Liberty and the Lynx. Um, the Liberty um, have a win this year. I think that was against Connecticut. But I don't think they're going to beat the Lynx. I think this is a bounce back for the Lynx. So give me Minnesota here against the Liberty. Sunday, 1 o'clock, ABC, the Wings and the Mercury. Good on, uh, good for the WNBA getting a couple games on ABC here. Um, I am going to go with the Mercury here. They're the better team. Um. By the way, Skylar Diggins Smith revenge match up here. So give me the Mercury. Three o'clock ABC. Storm in the Sun. Um not picking against the Storm until further notice. So give me the Storm to improve to a WNBA best nine and one. And four o'clock you have the sky against the Atlanta Dream. Now I'm gonna go over the current leaderboard at the Winham Championship. Um interesting day one to um, say the least. Um, so as of now, your leader with a score of 11 under, Tom Hoge. Tie for second, Harold Varner the third, and Roger Sloan with eight under. Tied for fourth, Patrick Reed, Henrik Norlander, Cheston Hadley, and Peter Malanti. With seven under. Tied for eighth. You have Rob Oppenheim. And Taylor Gooch. With six under. Tied for tenth. You have Saiwoo Kim. 
Kevin Kisner, Wesley Bryan, and Brian Harmon with five under. Tied for 14th. That's a big tie. All with the score of four under. C.T. Pon, Webb Simpson, Xinyun Zhang, Jim Herman, Sam Burns, Marcus Hubbard, Harry English, Bud Cawley, Nate Lashley, Billy Horschel, Matt Jones, Sam Burns, Patton Kazir, Scott Brown, Andrew Landry, Matthias Schwab, Scott Piercy, Paul Casey, and Ryan Brem, all with a score of four under. Tied for 32nd for a score of three under. I'm just going to do notables at this point. Dylan McCarthy, Luke List, um, Shane Lowry, Doc Redman, Chris Kirk, in the tie for 52nd with two under. Tyler Duncan among them. Brendan Todd. Kyung Hoon Lee. Among in the tie for 69th with one under. Tommy Fleetwood. Sun J.M. Sergio Garcia. Lucas Glover. Danny Lee. Jason Corkrack. Tied for 90th at even. You have Brian Stewart. Zach Johnson. Um, Matt Wallace. Jordan Spieth. Among those tied in 111th with one over. Um, ben Martin's in that mix. Tied for 122nd among notables are so much with a score of two over Brooks Kepka. Um, Justin Rose's three over tied for 129th along with JT Potson and DJ Trahan. And that's it among like the notable notables. So my pick of um, Justin Rose ain't looking too hot. Now I'm going to preview and predict the NASCAR races for the weekend. Um, should be a fun weekend in Daytona at the road course. We'll start with the Truck Series starting lineup. Um, this should be fun. It's the road course, don't forget. Zane Smith, Christian X, Brett Moffitt, Austin Hill, Tyler Ankrum, Todd Gilliland, Tanner Gray, Ben Rhodes, Derek Krause, Raphael Lesnar, Johnny Sauter, Matt Kraft, and Ty Majeski, Sheldon Creed, Tate Fogelman, Parker Klingerman, Grant Effinger, Cody Roadbog, Tyler Hill, Corey Roper, Alex Tagalini, Stuart Friesen, Austin Wayne Self, Spencer Boyd, Jonathan Anderson, Chris Wright, Carson Hosvar, um, Jennifer Joe Cobb, Natalie Decker, Scott Legace Jr., Spencer Davis, Norm Benning, Bobby Kennedy, Brian Collier, Mark Smith, Bobby Roos, Roger Roos, Mike Skeen, and Tim Vaines. Um, in terms of a pick here, I'm going to go with Johnny Sauter. I'm going to see if DraftKings has odds for this up yet. Um... And that's who I'm leaning on right now. Um, yes, they do. So Johnny Sauter, 25-1 to to win the race. That's really good value there. So going with Johnny Sauter for the trucks. All right, the Xfinity starting lineup for um, the Daytona um, race in the road course, replacing Watkins Glen for this year. 
you got Austin Sendrick, Chase Briscoe, Noah Gragson, Ross Chase, and Justin Haley, Andy Lally, Mike Lynette, Ryan Teague, Harrison Burton, Brandon Jones, A.J. Allmendinger, Preston Pardis, Brandon Brown, Josh Williams, Riley Herbs, Alex Lab, Justin Allinger, Jeremy Clements, Josh Baliki, Mike Wallace, Stephen Lick, Tommy Joe Martins, Daniel Hermnick, Jesse Little, Joe Graff Jr., Kyle Weatherman, Matt Snyder, Jeffrey Earnhardt, Earl Bamber, Scott Heckert, Cody Vanderwall, Jade Buford, B.J. McLeod, Bailey Curry, Chad Fincham, Matt Mills, Brandon Godvick, and a TBA. The TBA is interesting. So, Xfinity. I'm going to go with Harrison Burton for this race. 50-1. to 1. That's crazy good for somebody of his talent. That's good value. So, give me Harrison Burton to win this Daytona road course. And last but not least, the Cup Series starting lineup from the Daytona Road Course. You got Kevin Harvick, Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr., Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, Eric Almarola, Chase Elliott, Matt DiBendetto, Austin Dillon, Jimmy Johnson, Clint Boyer, William Byron, Ryan Newman, Chris Bell, Matt Kenseth, Brad Kozlowski, Tyler Riddick, Bubba Wallace. Eric Jones, Chris Boucher, Ryan Priest, Ty Dillon, Ryan Blaney, Ricky Stenhouse, Jr. Cole, Custer, Alec Bowman, John Hunter Nemechek, Corey LaJoy, Michael McDowell, Daniel Suarez, J.J. Yealy, Brendan Poole, Reed Sorensen, Quinn Houff, Timmy Hill, Gray Golding, Joey Gase, and Brendan Goggin. This is a tough call. Um, not going to go with Harvick, obviously, because I hate picking the pole winner. Um, I am going to say... That the winner of this race, this is a hard one to pick. This is the hardest one I've had to pick. How about Chase Elliott on? Oh, he's favored at four to one. I don't like that he's favored. So um, let's take that back because that's a. Um, I hate picking the favorite. But yeah, um, we go with Elliot or should I go Joey Logano sixteen to one? You know what? I'm gonna go with the favorite. I hate to do this, but I'm gonna go with Chase Elliott at four to one. I didn't realize that he'd be such a a short favorite. He should not. I think he's overvalued, but I do think he'll win the race. So give me Chase Elliott at four to one to win that race. Before we do best bet, um, two more players got paid in the NFL after George Kittle did, um, and one of them was another tight end, Travis Kelsey, who got a big contract extension. I believe it was four for 65. But anyway, good on the Chiefs for locking up Kelsey. Um, yeah, 457. Um, he obviously had the sacrifice there because they had the Packers Jones and Pat Mahomes. So Kelsey signed. The Chiefs have had a tremendous offseason, as we talked about on the podcast several times. So that's good. They got Patrick Mahomes' best weapon locked up. And another extension was given out to left tackle Deion Dawkins of the Bills, four years 60. Um, he earned that good payday. He had a good year at Buffalo. Um, he's going to be Josh Allen's blind side for years to come. And he really had a good season um so give me um that contract for Kelsey that was fantastic but um I think Dawkins got some good money too so good on the Bills for locking him up long term as well so those are two big contract extensions 
that go along with the big one that George Kittle got yesterday from the San Francisco 49ers. So two, or the two best tight ends in the game, and then an up-and-coming left tackle for the Bills. And by the way, um, I always had this theory of you get paid for future production, not past production. I feel like that's the case for uh, the NFL. Although I think Kelsey took less. Um, obviously, Kittle got the big bucks. Game paid like a wide receiver. And then Dawkins got that nice team-friendly contract as well. And obviously more NFL contract extensions you'll have here. And another thing I have to discuss briefly, the Bulls fired um, Jim Boylan. That was bound to happen. Boylan was a terrible coach for Chicago. He was the worst coach in the league after David Fisdale got fired from the Knicks. Um, and he, um, Boylan, referring to he, finally gets the ax. Um, that was bound to happen with a new front office in town and a complete overhaul. Um, obviously, uh, they hired the, the guy from Denver to run their um, operations, our tourism. Um, Karnasavis. So the candidates, um, Wes Unsell Jr. from Denver, Kenny Atkinson, Adrian Griffin, and Darvin Ham. If Kenny Atkinson doesn't get this job, then we know that something's up. Meaning that the Brooklyn thing really wasn't all that special and He's probably more to blame there than we thought. Um, I really thought the Knicks were going to hire Kenny Atkinson because just to stick at the Brooklyn, and he was a Knicks assistant under Mike D'Antoni in the past, and he was the perfect fit for a young rebuilding team. And that's what Chicago is. I think Kenny Atkinson would be the best fit, and I think Chicago's out of their minds if they don't hire him. And I said the same thing about the Knicks, and I still think the Knicks are out of their minds for not hiring Kenny Atkinson. But if the Bulls don't hire him with a new guy in town in the front office, that knows what he's doing, then that is going to start raising questions about Atkinson in my mind. Um, so, big uh, NBA breaking news on the podcast with Arturis Kanasovis firing Jim Boylan, which I thought was flat out inevitable. And now my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um... I hate the NBA lines for tonight, quite frankly, um, because they're all so close to what I would make them. So, for my best bet of the day, I am going to go with over 9.5 in Royals Twins. Um, Both of these... Um, pitchers are not very good and not off to good starts. I mean, Odorizzi had a good year last year, but he isn't as good as he was last year. That's just flat out true. And um, Odorizzi, to me, is a middle of the rotation guy, and he's been mediocre thus far. Although I do think the Twins can hit this over by themselves. I think this could be like a 10 5 Twins final. And then Junis is terrible. He's the one that hit Aaron Judge in the wrist two years ago. So, give me the over 9.5 in the Twins-Royals game as my best bet of the day. That's it for the podcast. I'll be back on Monday recapping everything from the weekend, from baseball to basketball to hockey, golf, NASCAR, and any other news that breaks in the world of sports, I'll have for you as well. Hope you guys have a great weekend, everyone.